Kids, welcome to JJ's cheap ass screen recorder thing. We are doing video three of the iNav setup for the drone that we built. So I've already set this up and mostly dialed it in. So I'm just gonna go over uh, the things that I did and explain a little bit of thing, a couple things in iNav. Now, real quick, if you want to download iNav, you can type in iNav in Google. And home, iNav Flight, iNav Wiki Hub. That's where you can download it. <laughs> and it is very similar to Betaflight, Butterflight, whatever you're you're into. Okay, um, it's just taking forever in a day. Anyway, that's where it's at. I'll put a link in the description to that as well. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do, and like I said, the system has already been set up. On, on this particular drone for the most part. I haven't dialed in PIDs necessarily, but it's it's a lot closer. So what we're gonna do with iNav, one thing I do recommend you guys do when you set these up on the computer, it takes a lot longer than Betaflight or Butterflight. So what I suggest you do is disconnect your VTX and that way you can sit with the battery power on the whole time and you don't have to worry about burning up your VTX. Now in our build, we use the VTX power coming out to power the board, so you um, might just want to put the VTX on the lowest setting. It doesn't get hot at all in this case. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in. All right. Just like um, Betaflight, go into Firmware Flasher. Put on full chip erase, full manual baud rate, I think. I mean, it, it works. I don't know if you have to or not, but that's just where I always have it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did we put in this thing? We put in a Maytech. I'm sorry. Brain fart. I'm not used to that. So Maytech F722. Hit this. And then go down to load firmware online. And flash. I'm not going to do that because I already did it. Now, the other kick in the butt with this is when you're using iNav, you almost always want your battery plugged in when you're setting it up because a lot of times depending on how you've built it a lot of times your gps will not boot up unless your battery is on if your gps does not boot up then you're not going to have gps mode in the modes tab and things like that so let's go through some of the screens here hit connect um, calibrate accelerometer calibrate magnometer we'll go ahead and go through that later i'm going to do that last Presets, what you want to do, actually go into setup again, I'm sorry, hit reset settings, reboot your controller, uh, trust me. Any, do that on every flight controller, whether it's beta flight, butterfly, whatever the case may be, wipe them out. Presets, in our particular case, we're going to go 5 inch GPS, click on it, hit apply, it'll say are you sure, it'll do it, it'll reboot, and it puts in special rates and things like that. You don't have to do this, but it does seem to work out fairly well. Ports tab, very much like um, like Betaflight. Uh, USB virtual COM port, you always leave that there. Uh, in the case of this board that we use, the Maytech, I put the, the receiver on UART 4. So that's what we set UART 4 up for. If you'll remember, I set the remote control for the VTX up on UART 1. And we set that over here to TBS Smart Audio. That way you can control the VTX through your Betaflight OSD. Uh, let's see, what else do we set up? UART 2, we went over to and set that up as GPS. I have mine on 115200, or uh, 115,200 baud rate. You, a lot of times you don't even have to mess with that, but I modified my GPS. So that's what I'm running mine on. And that's basically it for the ports. That's if you wired it just like I did in the video. Okay, configuration, similar to Betaflight, okay, but a lot more stuff. The thing that's weird about iNav is it does not support D-Shot, 
least to my knowledge. No, it does not, which is kind of weird. Um, I'll figure out why someday, but I don't care. So you have to select something here. Standard, which would be like good old school Simon K crap, like if you're doing a plane or a wing. Uh, and then you got your one shots, and I use multi shot. Now, remember with multi shot, guys, you have to calibrate your motor, your ESCs. So, to calibrate your ESCs, we probably all know this. You go into the motors tab, you leave the battery disconnected, you hit this switch, you hit master all the way up, then you plug in your battery, you'll hear a couple beeps, weird, you know, different calibration beeps, and then you slowly draw down the master and bam, you're calibrated. Do not forget to do that. I completely fucked myself one time not doing that, and I plugged in a quad and it sliced me up, so be careful on that. So enable motor and servo output. This is just a safety feature of iNav you have to do. It'll have, if you guys have just done a fresh install, it'll say up here, it'll say arming and motors disabled, blah, 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 blah. You have to hit this, put it on multi-shot, ESC refresh rate, that's fine. Um, oops, sorry about that. I'm gonna close that out so we don't have any more interruptions. Maybe. All right. Um, don't spin motors when armed. Uh, in iNav, you usually want those to spin, obviously. Uh, disarm regardless of throttle value, that's pretty much the same as beta flight. This stuff, I usually just leave stock. No big deal there. Um, if you find your air mode is not working correctly, meaning you have air mode permanently enabled and the, mo the props are not spinning when you arm, bring this value up, minimum command, and that will cure that disease. Okay, that reminds me actually, I think I need to, uh, I think I need to do that. Uh, let's go 60, probably take off and go through the roof. Uh, accelerometer, this is our accelerometer, it should auto-detect it. Mag, it should auto-detect our mag, which is our compass that's in our GPS. Our barometer, again, should automatically detect, and we are not running a pitot tube or a range finder. Uh, system configuration, gyroscope, I leave this stock, honestly. I don't even mess with this stuff. You're not building a race drone here. Um, you'll see in the flight video that I do, that they fly very, very smooth, they're still fast, um, but you don't have to go crazy with all your, you know, 32 kilohertz here and there and all this other stuff. You gotta remember, iNav is pumping out a lot of extra stuff that Betaflight and Butterflight don't normally do. So you better know what you're doing when you set that stuff up. Flight controller loop time, um, I have this one maxed out at 1K. I put my board in, backwards, right? The arrow on the flight controller was pointing towards the rear of the bird. You're going to want to, if you did it like me, you're going to want to put 180 degree offset on the board orientation and your mag alignment. This is very important with compass and GPS. Most GPS modules that are M8N and like the radio link or the Holy Bro that we use and a couple others, our, the chip is actually upside down in the case, and it's backwards around. So you want to put it at clockwise 270 flip. I have battery voltage enabled, and you set this just like you do in beta flight, no difference. You want to plug in a vol voltmeter into your balance lead of your battery, see what it says up here, and, and and if it's off, adjust the voltage scale up or down. It's very simple. Receiver mode, in our case, I'm running serial with SBUS. Current sensor, I don't use. You can if you want. That's fine. Uh, with this board, you have to plumb it in. Uh, GPS, U-Blocks is our protocol, which should have automatically detected. Um, auto detect for ground assistance type. And then you do want to click GPS navigation and telemetry. Otherwise, your GPS will not show up here. Now, something to remember about the up here part. If this is lit up in red, by the time you're done with all this stuff, you probably have your transmit and receive wires backwards. Just FYI. Same thing with the mag. If you don't have mag up here, check your SDA and SCL wires. Make sure they're not backwards. Uh, let's see, 3D. We're not doing 3D. Um, I have telemetry output enabled, multicolor RGB LED strip, 
and OSD and permanently enable air mode. We're gonna hit save and reboot. Okay. It should have beeped again, but that's okay. Let's see here, ports, blah, 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 blah. Everything's good here. Always double check everything that you're doing. Fail safe. This is different than beta flight. And this is something you always want to test, okay? With fail safe, you want to set it to return to home or return to launch, RTL, as some people call it. So basically what this means is if you turn off your transmitter, this thing is going to return to launch and come home. So if you're 500 yards away or a mile away and you turn off or turn off your transmitter or you lose range, bam, it's going to fly home. Well, uh, there's a couple ways to test this. If you've got a, a, a home range that we'll set up later, that if it's within, what is it, 500 centimeters of you or no, 5,000, I can't remember what it is. We'll, we'll see it in a minute. Um, it will just automatically land. It will not go up and fly home. So one of the things I always, always test is I will take the props off. I will arm the bird. I will, while the motors are spinning with the props off, I will turn off the transmitter. And if it's sitting on the ground, it should just land, meaning the props should just stop. The other way to test this, unfortunately, is if you're in the air, get it about, you know, get it a fair distance away from you, turn off your transmitter and hope it works. Uh, it usually does. It's not a big deal, um, but definitely test it on the ground first. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Or we can have it do nothing, which is not a good idea to do. So, PID tuning. This one's a little bit different than the beta flights and everything else that we're used to. I bring up my proportionals about five on every one and about two on every integral, and I leave derivative alone. Uh, and for this bird, that actually dials it in pretty good. It's not too bad. Uh, and I kick up the rates, roll, pitch, and yaw, to 1,200 and 1,000. Leave mag hold rate alone. I am not going to go through all this because this shit's boring enough as it is. Um, but if you're drifting, sometimes you can kick this up a little bit and it'll it'll go up. And actually, not drifting, but it's hard to explain. Mag hold rate, meaning how tight is it holding tolerance when it's in GPS mode. Um, do not play with any of this crap. You almost never, ever, ever have to do it. I have a couple of times changed the proportional on the Z and velocity of the barometer um, just to give it a little bit better altitude hold, but very seldomly don't fuck with this part here. Go out and fly it first and see what it does. You might not need to even do it because you do have to know what you're doing with this stuff. This I leave alone. This I leave alone. For stock, this is to get you in the air. You want to play with these settings later? Go right ahead. Yaw jump prevention. If you see it kind of twitching a little bit in yaw, which sometimes it will, you can bring this up a little bit and it will help that. Okay, not a big deal with that stuff. We'll go ahead and hit save. TPA, TPA breakpoint, same thing as beta flight. We'll skip over that. Advanced tuning. This is something that I do play around with a lot. Uh, vertical position barrow weight is barometer weight is about the only thing that I play with on this over here. Uh, this is for um, tightening up your altitude hold. I don't usually bring it up much, usually like up from 0.35 to 40. Over here, basic navigation settings. This is for when you're in GPS hold. And I'm going to explain the flight modes here in a minute. And you want to kick these up. This is what I run them at. And basically, this is GPS hold mode or um, oh, even uh, altitude hold mode. Or if you're flying programmed waypoints, these are the speeds that it will go. So my max cruise speed in GPS hold is 2,000 centimeters a second. Max navigation speed, that's for your, your uh, if you're programming waypoints. And you're gonna fly to somebody's house, drop a beer on their head. That's how fast it's gonna go at max speed. Blah 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 blah. You get the idea. Use mid throttle for altitude hold. I do not do. Uh, you can. I have mine on a switch. It's a little bit different. This is a little bit more of a numbnut setting. 
Um, return to home landing and setting. And I'm going, there's a lot I'm not going over. I get that, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. But I don't want to make this a two hour video on iNav. It's already going to be 40 minutes, probably. So, um, return to home altitude. You can do this, is very important. And I have it do this a lot, okay? I have my return to home go up to 3,000 centimeters before it flies home. Now, that is over 100 feet, right? So if we go centimeters to feet, all right, and we put in 3,000, that's 98 feet. The reason I have it do that is out here in the flat-ass Midwest, we don't have trees that are usually 100 feet high. So if this is how it's going to work, when you're flying, and let's just say you're 60 feet off the ground and you're half a mile away, and you hit the return to home switch, it is going to stop dead in its tracks, and it's going to raise up 3,000 centimeters vertically. It's going to go up 100 feet in the air, then it's going to orientate and point its nose towards home, and then it's going to start flying home. Under return to launch or return to home command, you have no command with the transmitter. You can put it sticks in, unless they've changed it, you can put stick commands in, everything else, but return to launch is the oh shit switch. It basically says, hey, this guy's lost or we're in trouble, get this bitch home as fast as you can. I always have mine go up 3,000 centimeters. That way, if, I, if there's trees in the path, it will clear the tops of the trees. Then I always set this climb before return to home, uh, obviously. If you're already above 3,000 feet, it will stay at that height, if I remember right. So say you're at, I'm sorry, yeah, if you're over, if you're already 3,000 centimeters and you're flying at 7,000 centimeters, it will continue home at 7,000 centimeters and then land, uh, if I remember right. Um, climb regardless of position sensor health, meaning if there's a GPS issue, I put yes. If there's a, a sensor issue, you're probably screwed anyway, so yeah, whatever. Tail first, not real sure why you'd want that, whatever. Uh, instead of the nose pointing home, the butt points home. So, you know, Bardwell parameter. Uh, land after return to launch or return home, I always do, okay? So that's what I do. It will come home, and I rarely, rarely let it land by itself. Like if I get lost, which does happen quite a bit, um, or in trouble, or whatever the case may be, I will let her return to home until she's, you know, within a safe distance of me, and then I will um, have it, I'll take over. I'll flip it out of return to launch, and I'll do whatever I'm going to do. Landing vertical speed, that kind of makes sense. That's how fast this thing is going to go down. Vertical landing speed at altitude. Vertical landing speed slow down at altitude, and then there's an emergency landing speed. I don't honestly remember what the um, I don't remember what this does. I really don't. I don't know if it's if it goes off of battery being too low or something like that, and it just lands faster, or that is the um, what do they call that? The panic button. We'll talk about that later. Return to home abort threshold. This is kind of important. If for some reason you're flying around and your GPS module gets turned like 180 degrees around, just you got a loose screw or something, basically, if it sees it going past this amount, the opposite direction of home, it will abort. That way it doesn't fly to Jamaica. Okay, so that's kind of, an, I've never in my life had that happen, but you know, anything's possible. These are fixed wing settings. We're not going to worry about those. Receiver. Just like Betaflight, guys, I set mine to TAER. I put in an RC dead band and yaw dead band of 10. On Betaflight, I use 15 or Butterflight. Um, I don't use Expo. These are just defaults. And then modes. This part is important, okay? This is why you have to have this GPS lit up. If you do not have this GPS lit up, meaning a battery plugged in, you will not have position hold and you will not have return to home mode in this list. So that is crucial, all right? Arming, just like beta flight. It does not have the auto. You have to select whatever you're doing. And then, just like beta flight, put the slider where you want it, and that's it. Angle mode, same principle. However, I have, this is a hybrid quad. So 
I have it set up so my first position on my three position switch is acro, just like Betaflight. There's nothing here. But then I have angle mode for three fourths of it. I'll show you why. You go down to navigation hold, which is altitude hold. No, I'm sorry, navigation altitude hold. This uses the barometer, okay? And I have angle mode incorporated with that. It is automatic, but I just do that because I'm from the old school. Uh, so when you flip my, my first position of my switch is acro, which is right here. And my second position is going to be altitude hold, which is right here. And it also enables angle mode. I do that just because, like I said, old school. Um, so now what will happen is if you put it in altitude hold, it uses the barometer and holds the height that you're at. And it does a pretty good job too. So if you're 30 feet off the ground and you put it in altitude hold, it'll automatically go into angle mode or self, self angling. And it will hold your altitude up or down. It basically takes control of your throttle, if that makes sense. Um, but that is not GPS hold. So if it's a windy day like today, and it's, you're going 20 mile, 20 mile an hour winds, and you put it in altitude hold mode, and you're at 30 feet in the air, it's going to stay at 30 feet in the air. But if you take your hands off the sticks, it's literally going to stay at 30 feet in the air and blow away to the left or to the east or to the west. Does that make sense? It's not holding position. It's holding height. So now if you go down to position hold, and that is my third position on the switch, okay, that is using altitude hold with position, okay? So notice, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to turn this on real quick. Okay, so you guys can see this. So if I flip, right now I'm in acro. If I go to the second position, you'll see angle mode light up right here, and you'll see altitude hold line up, but position hold is not. I go to the third point, GPS mode. and GPS mode comes on. So now what that utilizes is it utilizes your barometer for altitude hold, and it utilizes your GPS for position hold and angle mode, okay? Does that make sense? So you can literally put, and I do, I'm going to try to do this in the video if we ever get a day that's not windier than shit out. I'll put it 10 feet in the air, 6 feet in the air. I'll put it in GPS hold and it'll stick there. And I can push it with my hand and it will return right back to that position. You still have control in any of these modes, either altitude hold mode or position hold, with the transmitter. But it is a slower mode, if that makes sense. Remember that screen we were at where it had the, uh, the speeds under advanced tuning, I believe it was? Yes, right here. Those speeds are for when you're in any of those modes. So these modes down here, unless you're in acro mode, that's going to be full quadcopter, full speed, bam, full control. Anytime I start adding stuff, then it reverts to those up here as far as speeds go. So that's return to, return to launch or return to home. Altitude hold. Okay, I'm sorry, GPS. position hold. Now, return to home, I have on a separate switch, okay? That is an override. So if you hit return to launch right now, return to launch. see how it went on right there? No matter what position any of your other stuff is in, it does not matter. If I'm in acro mode and I'm flying upside down 300 feet in the air and I hit return to launch, that bitch is going to go instantly into angle mode you don't have to set up a thing. It'll go instantly into angle mode and instantly orientate itself and instantly start flying home. Or it's going to raise up if you're below that threshold that we talked about up here. And it will take over. So you don't have to worry about any of these positions of your modes. Now, if I say I get lost, I'm flying in an unknown location, and I flip into return to launch or return to home because I get lost or whatever and it's flying home now i get a little bit more comfortable of where i'm at if i turn return to launch off like that it will revert to whatever mode was set in here relative to your mode switch does that make sense so if i was in acro mode and i'm flying got fucked up hit return to launch or return to home it starts flying home but then i turn this back off if my mode switch is still in acro mode bam it's going to go back into acro mode so remember that because sometimes you can get soft and comfortable. It's like, oh, I'm going to switch it off now, and you realize it's falling out of the sky because you're in acro mode still. Uh, that's just an FYI. Um, 
let's see what else and you could always add another angle mode uh, if you a lot of people don't know you can do this but you can add another mode and I can say okay my return to home you can do this on beta flight too guys by the way channel 8 I can make it so if channel 8 is on right I can make that thing go automatically into angle mode as well uh, but you wouldn't do it in this case I'm just showing you a little tidbit there um, so that's return to launch or return to home waypoint navigation this is for when you want to send points from a Google map location into the flight controller it stores it you flip a switch and it flies so for instance I get on to the ground control station that is not what this video is about and I get on there and I set my waypoints okay point one is Jason's house point two is here point three point four point five and I do point point nine hundred is Blackhawk's house 15 miles away then I upload that into the flight controller I go ahead and I take off you don't even have to take off actually then I just flip my waypoint switch on bam set the controller down go have a drink it's going to go over to Blackhawk's house and land in his chimney pretty cool that's not what this video is about. We're not getting into that. Home reset. This is an interesting one that can be good and bad. Um, every time that you arm a bird with INAV, that is its now home position. So if I take this thing out in the middle of my driveway and I arm it, that is home. So if I fly a mile away and hit return to launch, bam, it's going to fly back to my driveway and land from where it took off within a foot or two. Now, if I am flying over a football field, and right over that football field, I hit reset home position. Guess what? It's going to return to that home position that we reset it to. And if it's 50 feet in the air, it's going to stay sitting at 50 feet in the air, which is kind of interesting. So I don't really use this one a lot, but I suppose you could. Ground con control station navigation is when you're controlling the unit or the drone from a computer. You're not using a transmitter. Uh, I would not recommend that with iNav. Just that's, you can literally go, you can use your cell phone and a Bluetooth and you can fly your full scale, expensive, stupid, fast bird from your cell phone, which would be really stupid, but you can do it. That beeper, we all know what beeper is. LED low, you can turn your LEDs off if you have them. That's just like beta flight. OSD is just like beta flight. You can turn off your OSD. Kill switch, this is just your typical oh shit you hit your e-stop the thing falls out of the sky fail safe is just return to launch as an override you can configure it um, up in the configuration area I don't use it I just use return to launch I have it set to return to launch but you can have fail safe do multiple stage things you can have it return to launch then kill you can do all sorts of stuff camera control one two and three those are for gimbal control which we do not have on here Adjustments, these are all just like beta flight, servo cal calibrations, and if you're doing um, dual axis gimbals, things like that. Servos, same principle. I'm sorry, adjustments is not that. Adjustments is if you're doing in the air PID tuning and things like that. I'm sorry. But servos is if you want to dial in your, um, if you're doing a flying wing or a fixed wing, you could tweak your servos, you can do all that good stuff. GPS. This is cool. I can see right exactly where my quad is sitting right in my bedroom at this point. So that's where that's at. Inside, I've got 17 satellites with a 3D fix. That's my latitude and longitude. Bam, everything's copacetic there. Motors, just like Betaflight. OSD, just like Betaflight. Now, I like this OSD almost better because I set mine up. I'm going to go over some of these. We all know what most of this stuff is. System messages, it'll tell you how, you know, if your battery's low, things like that. Which fly mode are you in? Usually I don't use this in beta flight or butterfly, but I do use it in drones because it'll say right here, it's in stabilized mode, it's in return to launch mode, it's in GPS mode or whatever, acro mode kind of nice to have i don't use throttle position battery cell voltage is your average voltage per cell battery voltage we all use usually which i have set right here fly minutes how long i've been flying is here i have a compass right here which is your heading graph it tells you which direction you're going which is really nice 
um, how many satellites you have in the air. The minimum amount of satellites by default for this thing, I want to say is six. Um, let's see. Oops, my bad. Come on, Cletus. Uh, satellites. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure it's six, if I remember right. Um, which is fine. But I wouldn't love flying with six. Because if you have one dropout, things can get sketchy. But I'm sitting in the house and have 14. Nine times out of ten when I'm flying, I get like 20. Just depends where you're at. Um, altitude in feet. That's off your barometer right there. Right here is going to be... Um, where are we at? I'm sorry. That is down here. Yeah. Distance to home. I'm sorry. That's how far away you are from the house or from where you started out flying. And then down here, I put my latitude and longitude. Here's what is really, really nice about flying a drone. And somebody asked me this um, in on the channel today. They said, you know, what's the point of having a small bird that's got GPS on it? And so, well, the, the point is, one, I do put um, an HD camera on drones. I don't usually use a gimbal. I'm not a photographer. I'm not good, you know, but... Um, I'll put like the Foxier box on there or whatever else. But what's nice is I can go really high. I can go really far. If I get lost, I don't care. I hit return to launch. Bam, she comes home. Uh, if I crash I've and I'm recording my DVR, I've got my last known longitude, latitude, and direction I was flying. I go back into my DVR. I type these numbers into Google Earth, and you can walk right to the scene of the crash and pick up the bodies. That is really cool. There's a certain level of stress that gets eliminated when you fly a GPS drone. Now, DJIs and things like that are a little bit different because they have you locked down. You can only go so high. You can only go so fast. You can, you know, DJIs aren't fast usually. This bird is going to be quick. And depending on how you build yours, you could put any type of motor on there. You can put uh, hype train motors on there, whatever you want to do, and things is going to haul ass. Um, and there's no height limit. There's no, uh, this is bad, but there's no airport limits. There's no restrictions. You want to fly over Fort Knox and get your ship blown up. You can do it with these because there's no lockdown whatsoever. So that's why I like GPS drones and GPS drones are fun too, because when you're flying, it's just more relaxing. You can just fly around and you know, if you get too, too worried about something, flip the switch, have her come home. She'll land right next to you. It's great. So that's how I set up my uh, OSD on my LED strip. How I set these up, very straightforward. You saw in the video, I only put one LED on there, okay? Um, let's get out of this. Let's go back in here, go back into here. Uh, you can set up as many LEDs as you want, obviously, but go into wiring mode, click one of them, does not matter which. Turn this back off, go into function, go into GPS, and then no satellites, it blinks red. Getting satellites, but not locked, which is 3D lock, flashes blue, and once you've got locked, she flashes green. The interesting thing to understand about this is if this is flashing blue, it means it's acquiring satellites because GPSs have a cold, what they call a cold start. So it sometimes takes 30 seconds. This is a really nice GPS, it heats up fast, but sometimes it takes 30, 40 seconds for them to get going. If this blue thing flashes three times, then pauses, then flashes three times, that means it's found three satellites. Once it finds up to six or seven, whatever the default is, and it gets a 3D lock, it'll flash green by however many satellites you have. So if you have 12 satellites locked, it'll flash 12 times, pause, then flash 12 more times, then pause. So if you want to count the damn things, count them. You know, there you go. Hit save, bam. It's typical LED stuff. All good. Um, CLI works exactly the same as beta flight. Type dump, type diff, type whatever you want. I do recommend every time you come in to make changes on your GPS drone and iNav, do a backup, okay? Because... There's a lot to this, and sometimes it's hard to remember what you've changed and what you haven't. The next thing I want to go over, and then we're going to call it a day, and I know I haven't gone into super huge details with this, uh, but I, it's enough to get you off the ground in most cases, I think. So what I want to talk about now is calibration 
and accelerometer calibration because it's very important if this isn't done right bad things will happen so in your setup screen get your orientation first remember configuration orientate your board first orientate your mag alignment first hit save reboot set up the whole you can set up everything on this bird and do what i'm about to show you absolutely last and you'll be fine it's that's actually how I do it. I'll go into setup and I'll hit calibrate accelerometer. What you want to do, this is not like beta flight. Okay, beta flight, you set your bird flat and you hit go. Okay, this one is a six step process. So what you're going to do, whoop, okay, flat, upside down, three o'clock, 12 o'clock, nine o'clock, six o'clock. Okay, so you're going to hit calibrate accelerometer while she's sitting level. Wait a second, and this this will kind of go gray, and then it will light back up once it lights back up, or I think your computer beeps too. Hit it again with it upside down. So flip it upside down, hit the button. Then put it at this, this, you know, hit this, hit that button, hit that, hit that button, put it in that position, hit that button, put it in that position, hit that button, and then you're done. You want to make it as level as you can, but it is not 100% necessary to use bubble levels and angles and all that shit when you're doing this trust me i've experimented with this you want to get it close but you can eyeball it guys you do not have to have it perfectly level on a perfectly you know cmm table coordinate measuring machine for those of you in the industry um so six step process it's very simple to do okay bam now the next thing you need to do is calibrate your your compass or your mag to calibrate your mag, what you want to do, you have 30 seconds to do it. Use a long USB cord, <laughs> hit calibrate mag, and then what you want to do is you want to spin slowly, not super slow, but you know, I don't know, just don't bust a nut doing it. You want to spin the quad on all three axes. You so you want to spin it, spin it X, Y, and Z, spin it around, all the way around like it is now. Here, I can show you on this. So we would hit calibrate and we would rotate it 360 degrees that way. Then we would rotate it 360 degrees that way. And then you would rotate it 360 degrees that way. And then you're, you're gonna, that's only gonna take you about 10 to 12 seconds. Then the other 15 seconds, 17 seconds you have, then just rotate it around randomly. That's all you gotta do until this comes back to lit up or like it is right now. Um, and you'll have a nice solid calibration. If for some reason you go out there and you put it in GPS hold mode and it starts what they call toilet bowling, where it starts kind of slowly going in circles and each circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you probably didn't calibrate your mag very well. But iNav is, has a very good algorithm for their calibration. You don't have to get that anal with it. It doesn't have to be perfectly level or anything. It's very, very simple to do. Bam, so there you go. When you go out to test it, what I strongly suggest you do if you've never flown a drone before with iNav, go down to your modes, do not use acro. <laughs> use angle mode, just good old fashioned angle mode for your first position, your second position, make it altitude hold, and your third position, make it position hold. First check angle mode, make sure the damn thing flies first, make sure it's not like total crap wagon, then put it in altitude hold and she should hold height, but drift, right? And then if that works well in a nice wide open area, click on your position hold and see if she sits true. It should sit within six inches. If you've done a good job within a couple inches in space, even with wind, it should fight the wind, okay? But make sure you're in an open spot for this one. I've had this go wrong on me before. It's like, oh shit. If you have an oh shit moment, just flip it back into angle mode and you're fine. Do not flip it into return to home because return to home uses the compass and the GPS. And if this isn't working, this sure as hell ain't going to work and it's going to fly away. So only after nav position hold is working, then you can try return to launch. That's exceptionally important. This, If this ain't working, that sure as hell ain't going to work, right? So there you go. If you guys have any questions, I know I went through it fast, but it's boring shit. So anyway, keep shine side up. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.
Bam, JJ. Hope you like fishing. Bam, JJ. Hey, JJ. Hope you like fishing. <laughs>